Ten servicemen escaped from a military unit in the village of Kochenyovo in the Novosibirsk region of Russia. This was reported by head of the Kochenyevsky district, Yevgeny Antipov. Information is being disseminated about an incident on the territory of the military unit of Kochenyovo. I ask you to remain calm and not to trust unreliable information. According to the Kochenyevsky District Department of Internal Affairs, the 10 people from the category of those who had previously voluntarily left the unit without permission. Within 30 minutes, they left the territory of the village by taxi. No crimes were committed on the territory of the district. Four people were detained outside the Kochenyevsky district, he wrote. As reported by the NGS publication, citing a source about 30 people from all over the central military district who had previously voluntarily left their units for reasons unrelated to service, were seconded to the military unit in Kochenyovo. In a chat room of local residents of the village, a local police officer reported that the escapees were unarmed. All of the escapees are the so-called five hundredths, as deserters are called in military slang. According to preliminary data, the servicemen were gathered in Kochenyovo to be sent to the special operations zone. The publication writes, According to Sibir.Reli, one of those who left the military unit was 29-year-old Anatoly Petrovishev, a native of the village of Odinskoy in the Novosobirsk region. An acquaintance of Petrovishev confirmed that he had previously been in the combat zone in Ukraine. The interlocutor provided photographs of the man from a field camp allegedly near the front. According to the description among the SKPs, was also a resident of the Karatuski district of the Krasnoyarsk territory, Anatoly Serkin. In 2020, he received 2.5 years in a special regime colony for stealing a laptop. The man had previously been convicted several times for similar crimes. Thousands of Russian soldiers are deserting the army, according to Kyiv. Earlier, Ukraine's military intelligence agency said that troops under Russia's southern military district deployed to fight in the war are increasingly deserting their posts. Desertion has been an issue for Russia's military throughout Putin's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Desertion from the Russian army carries a 10-year prison sentence. In February, a Russian anti-war project named Get Lost which was created to help Russian men evade or escape conscription in Ukraine, said cases of desertion from the Russian military increased tenfold this year. In the Kursk region, the Russian army carries out daily attacks on the positions of Ukrainian forces. At the same time, the enemy steps on the same rake as it acts on the basis of incorrect intelligence. As a result, this leads to numerous losses in the ranks of Putin's army. A week after the start of a new counter-offensive in Kursk region, with the aim of driving out Ukrainian forces from there, the enemy is suffering staggering losses, but has not achieved any major successes Forbes reports. During this period, Putin's army only managed to gain a foothold in Pogrebki, but this is very little consolation against the backdrop of heavy losses along the western and northern sides of the Kursk salient. Experts say there is more than one problem here. The fact is that there are not so many roads on the northern and western salients, so the enemy has to attack along the same route. It is also unclear who and how provides information to the Russian army about the location of the Ukrainian armed forces. As a result, all attacks by Putin's army are predictable. This leads to large losses, said the operator of the Ukrainian armed forces drones Kriegsforscher. In a week of fighting in the area of Zeleny Shlyak, he has already counted 88 units of destroyed enemy armored vehicles. Just November the 12th, 11 Russian vehicles from the 51st Airborne Regiment, as well as the 155th and the 810th Marine Brigades of the Russian Armed Forces were destroyed. The enemy attacks every day. The Russians are confronted by forces of the 17th, 41st, 47th and 95th Brigades of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. They meet Putin's army with artillery, mines, drones, tanks and missiles. A striking example of the inaccuracy of the enemy intelligence is the events of November the 7th. On that day, the occupiers from the 810th Brigade in their new BTR-82s were destroyed at close range by Ukrainian defenders. 
It is possible that the local commanders assured their superiors from above that all roads to Pogrebki were allegedly controlled by Russian forces. It is logical that after such information, the Russian Defense Ministry gave the order to attack the village. However, the occupiers did not control the road and did not even clear this section of the front. In general, deliberate misinformation of the general staff by the command of the 810th Brigade has become a common practice, said Ukrainian Armed Forces serviceman Romanov. By passing false information up their chain of command and then passing false orders back, Russian commanders in Kursk are setting their troops up for bloody tactical failures. This means they are likely to suffer catastrophic losses regardless of the battle's final outcome. The main advantage of the Russians, as it was in all wars, is their numbers. Now in Kursk region, 20 to 30,000 Ukrainian defenders are fighting with 50,000 of Putin Kim's Arya. The most important thing is that the Ukrainian armed forces know about the attacks of the Russian armed forces. They know how, where and when they come. All that is required from the Ukrainian forces is to lay mines, set up artillery, launch drones and wait for a new wave of attacks. The Wall Street Journal has informed that the warm public relationship between U.S. President-elect Donald Trump and Russian leader Vladimir Putin hides deep tensions. Recently, reports emerged suggesting that Donald Trump held a phone call with Putin the day after his victory in the elections. During the conversation, Trump advised Putin to avoid escalating the war in Ukraine. The WSJ has recalled that relations between Washington and Moscow worsened during Trump's first term. Putin and Trump failed to reach agreements on core issues such as arms control, security cooperation, and continued U.S. support for Ukraine, which Russian forces invaded in 2014. Russia sought agreements on tactical and intercontinental nuclear weapons and a deal that would somehow satisfy Moscow's demands for Ukraine to remain neutral and not join NATO. Kurt Volker, former U.S. representative to NATO under Trump's administration, believes that Trump's warm words towards Putin mask a more transactional negotiation tactic. So if you look at his first term, he had a very warm commentary towards Putin. At that same time, he lifted an arms embargo on Ukraine and kicked the Russians out of San Francisco and called it a spying operation. He threw out about 80 intelligence officers from New York and Washington, said Volker. According to the US diplomat, Trump does not demonize the person he's negotiating with as he wants to make a deal. Now, Trump and Putin have returned to the warm public rhetoric, but the camaraderie belies deeper tensions. Putin is not ready for any substantive talk around any possible peace plan because he is not ready to make any concessions. Full stop. He believes that he has enough financial and emotional resources to continue, said Andrei Kolesnikov, a veteran Russian watcher. While Trump has promised to end the war in Ukraine even before taking office, Putin has already laid out his terms for coming to the negotiating table. Putin wants significant territorial concessions from Ukraine and assurances that Kyiv will not join NATO. Additionally, he seeks a rollback of extensive U.S. sanctions. A former U.S. diplomat to Russia stated that the Russian president believes he is doing quite well on the battlefield and even increased diplomatic contact with Trump is unlikely to soften his behavior.